Station is the way of loath. The ambition she bestows to further the chaos, to keep her drow children along their appointed course of self-imprisonment. The elves are beings of endless grace and beauty. Humanoids who were crafted in the spitting image of the illustrious Corallan Lorithian. But not all of their kind are so fair. There are those who dwell deep beneath the earth, in immense subterranean kingdoms. The endless tunnels of the Underdark are home to these elves of grey skin and silvery hair, with bright red eyes that bear a piercing malice and cruelty. These are the Dark Elves, the Drow, a wicked race with a wicked religion. In the Golden Age, Coraline ruled over his children. The prosperity of mortal and god alike was boundless, until the enemies of Corallon came. The gods of the orcs, goblins, ogres, and many more threw themselves at his pantheon, crashing onto the gates of Arvandor. Though none were able to overcome him entirely, the patron of elves was wounded by a terrible ogre god. After the battle, his wife, the goddess Arashni, tended to his wounds. But before the healing waters could be applied, they were struck from her hands by Illustri, elf goddess of the moon and daughter of Coralyn. She explained to her father that the wars were of Arashni's making and the healing waters had been poisoned. She intended to supplant him as supreme ruler of the elvish pantheon. Enraged by betrayal, Coralyn banished Arashni, forbidding any member of his pantheon or the mortal elves to speak her name. And so she adopted a new one, one which her followers would know her as forevermore. Loth, the Queen of Spiders. After her banishment by her former husband, Loth did away with any benign aspects of her being, becoming a creature of cold cruelty. Reveling in betrayal and bloodshed, she toys with her victims and followers alike. This torture is no simple childish indulgence. It is an art, one that Loth has perfected over the centuries. Nothing brings her greater contentment than witnessing her misbegotten playthings fall into her web and struggle in vain to escape. But her malice, while certain, is often capricious. Unlike Coralie, Loth does not care to know the secrets or experiences of her drow followers. As such, she grants them not one iota of freedom demanding complete and utter obedience from all Dark Elves at all times. To question her word is the ultimate act of blasphemy, punishable by a horrid death. Despite her demands for total loyalty, those that follow Loth blindly find themselves in her webs, stuck just as tightly as the enemies of the Spider Queen, her capricious nature making it difficult to predict her next move. Only those that know how to read the threads she weaves will truly gain her favor, for she is a fickle goddess, and will often turn upon her most faithful without warning. Such sudden acts of cruelty are more often placed upon male drow, for Lulf thinks less of them than any of her other followers. A bitterness lingers from her defeat at the hands of Coralyn and all men within Dark Elf society are at best second-class citizens, eternally subservient to their better halves. It is forbidden for any male drow to rise to a position of authority within this society. This is perhaps the most consistent commandment of Loth. Though her cruelty is boundless, Loth is not without mercy. Any dissenters and failures are given one chance to redeem themselves. Do not mistake her mercy for kindness. These are surely just tricks, 
another means to exert her will upon the mortals of the Prime. Her ability to manipulate is fueled by her desire to dominate. One of Loth's ultimate goals is to see the entire elven race fall into her grasp. She often sends avatars or chosen champions to corrupt other beings to her side. Many a chaste priest, strong hero or wayward mage has walked right into her web. Promises of power, knowledge, and riches, guiding the ignorant like puppets. Thus do her priestesses call Loth the Weaver of Fates. Loth's physical body is a reflection of the fractured yet sublimely powerful mind she holds. The upper half of her body is that of a drow woman with striking features and silky white hair. Many would consider this part of her to be beautiful until your eyes descend to her other half and behold the horrible abdomen of a great black spider with strong legs and fangs dripping venom. Her humanoid half is often covered in robes made from her own webs or armor made of black plates while her spider half is protected by a strong exoskeleton. The legs are strong and let the Spider Queen crawl along any surface. Her webs are said to be strong enough to bind other deities. Then her venom can do its work. It drips not just from her spidery fangs, but from her own hands and fingernails. It is a terrible toxin that causes great pain, but also paralyzes her victims ensuring that they cannot escape the tortures to come. The Spider Queen, though capable of using magic, tends to shy away from spellcasting, preferring instead the intimacy of simple melee combat, ripping apart her foes with deceptive strength and poisonous touch. Should she find an encounter to be beneath her, she will summon her own followers, there are always guards, or perhaps assassins of the drow, following Loth's avatars at all times. And then there are the spiders. As the goddess of spiders, Loth can see through their many beady eyes and summon entire armies of spiders of all sizes to drown her foes in a sea of poisonous fangs and skittering legs. A lucky thing then, that the Spider Queen prefers manipulation to combat. Arashni, your sentence has been spoken by the Seldarine. For what you have done, for what you have become, you are declared Tanari. Be what you are, and go where you must. When Loth was defeated by Coraline, she was banished from the heavens. No deific realm would house her after her betrayal. She skittered away into the one place that her former husband and his allies would not dare follow. The Abyss. The demonic realm is a swirling and endless mass of chaotic evil. The perfect place for her to spin her webs. With her power and cunning, Loth conquered an entire layer of the demonic realm, earning her the title of Demon Lord and creating her new home, the Demon Web Pits. The Demon Web is a realm unto itself. From here the Queen of Spiders is safe from the other demons of the Abyss and casts her threads into all realities ensnaring foes and unwilling allies alike across multiple dimensions. The worship of Loth is a dangerous thing. The mistress of the demon webs encourages subterfuge, infighting, and assassinations among her clerics. This may seem as insanity, but in truth it is her way of culling the weak. It also provides insurance that no single drow priestess will ever grow too powerful to be controlled. Loth can rest easy, knowing that any drow that rises to positions of greatest influence 
will not remain there long enough to truly betray their patron goddess. Her clerics are almost exclusively female and form a ruling caste of drow society, enforcing the will of the Spider Queen unto the populace and punishing the dissenters with great cruelty. Rituals of sacrifice are common to gain the favor of their Spider Queen. While many surface dwellers that are captured become slaves, those surface elves that are captured are often sacrificed. The initiates of the Church of Loth wear robes of deep purple and black, adorning themselves with spider motifs, but the highest ranking priestesses of Loth wear little, if any, clothing at all. They know their goddess is always suspicious of betrayal, and so keep themselves bare to show how little they have to hide. Loth, Queen of Spiders, Mistress of the Demon Web, Master of the Drow, and Supreme Goddess of Cruelty. She weaves a grand, endless web, and we are all just flies, buzzing about, ignorant of the silvery threads that seek to bind us. On this channel, I put together narrative D&D lore videos. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, please support the channel by subscribing, sharing the video with a friend, and leaving a like. I would really appreciate it. Leave a comment down below as well if there's a D&D topic you want a narrative lore video about. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.